Today we're going to set the governor on an older Onan CW 10 kilowatt generator. And uh, we're going to follow the instructions in the owner's manual for it. <clears throat> it does state that it can run 15 kilowatts for five minutes. So uh, that's what we have it set up to do. Well, maybe not for five minutes, but we're going to run 15 kilowatts out of it. And I've removed the air box so you can see all the pieces of the adjustment. We have our main speed adjusting nut with a jam nut behind it. You'll use that for your no load and full load adjustment speed. You have a sensitivity screw in here. The shorter you make that screw, the more responsive the governor will be. If it can't stabilize on a uh, at a certain load, you'll need to lengthen that so that the, uh, the governor is a little bit looser and it can actually stabilize the RPM. On this, I have it almost all the way in and it stabilizes fine at any load, so that's where I left it. This being a 10 kilowatt unit has a throttle booster on it that uh, senses a vacuum in the intake and applies an additional load to the throttle rod. The length of the throttle rod was actually off on this one, and by the paint and crud on it, it had been off for a while. So I had to adjust that. Basically, with the generator off, this is applying full throttle. There's a stop, um, like roll pin at the bottom. There should be about a 30 second gap on that. So as I move this, it just touches. Normally, it's off of that. And obviously, when it goes the other way, you want your idle screw just touching. On the carburetor, under your electric choke is your idle mixture screw. Uh, starting setting for that is a turn and a half out, and that's about where I left this one. Your high speed or main mixture screw is down here. Uh, one turn out is what the manual says is a good starting position. I found that a turn and a quarter was where this generator wanted to run uh, to get good response out of the carburetor. So this has already been set. Um, I'll put the order of events to set the governor in the description of it. It'll be a little easier to follow that way. It'll be written. You won't have to fast forward and rewind through it. But uh, the final test is that at no load and full load, we shouldn't have more than a three hertz variance in frequency. We'll close this. So we're gonna give that a check. The only thing I noticed with this is I have a 1500 watt heater at no load whatsoever sometimes it floats a couple of hertz higher so what I'm going to do is turn the heater on um, and put a, a 1500 watt load on the generator let it just stabilize at frequency and you probably won't hear me with it running so what we're going to be looking at through here we have an amp meter for the two hot phases being a single or two hot legs of the generator being single phase our voltmeter, which the adjustments for that we'll probably do another video on. And basically we're going to be looking at the frequency meter. We're going to try and keep it right at the 60 hertz mark. We'll see how successful we are. I'm going to put, um, I think it's going to be about 13 or 14 kilowatts of load on it. What I'm using for a load is a uh, old Westinghouse, I think it's a 400 amp welder. And I've just uh, clipped the ground lead right back on the front of it. And uh, you probably shouldn't do that with a welder, but we're going we're gonna to use it that way anyway. All right, we're going to fire it up, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll start it with absolutely no load on it. Uh, stuff's turned off in there. You'll see it probably run at about 61, 61 and a half hertz. I'll put the heater on. It should drop it back to 60. And when I apply an additional 12 or 13,000 watt load with the, gener with the uh, welder, Hopefully it stays close to 60, and we'll see what happens. Fuel pump. Now our heater is running.
So you can see with uh, about a 1500 watt load on it, it held at just over 60 hertz or right at 60 hertz after it warmed up a little bit. It was off for uh, maybe 20 minutes while I went and grabbed the camera. So the uh, electric choke might have started to close a little bit. But basically, with a little bit of load on it, switching on another 10 or 12,000 watts of load leaves it within a half a hertz. So it looked good that way. When everything was warm, nothing was hunting around. So I think that was a uh, successful adjustment. And now we'll just put the air box back in and close everything else back up. And in the description, I'll put the procedure from the booklet from Onan. Um, on how to how to adjust everything. Thanks for watching.